Hey, this is Paul Salt from Super Easy Apps. I wanted to put together a quick little lesson on actions and outlets. This is a question in response to one of John's questions. And the question was, when do you use an outlet? When do you use an action? Where do you set them up? And so this is a little bit complicated, but I'm gonna try and break it down so it's very simple to understand. I have a label up top here and I have a button. So when I run the iPhone app, I'm gonna see these appear in the top left corner of my iPhone and it's actually starting the six plus. We're gonna switch this over to the six S. I always recommend using a six S size just because it's gonna be easier on your screen resolution. All right, so we run this app and a, a label is something that we can change in code using an outlet and a button is something that can actually trigger an action. So what I mean by that is we can't change the text here for this label that we've created in Interface Builder or in our storyboard without having a reference to it in our code file. So we need to create some kind of connection. So that's what an outlet is. An outlet is a connection from this UI element, the user interface element, to our code. So that's what an outlet is. And an action is when you click this button, when I tap on it with my mouse, I want something to happen. I want a chunk of code to run. And so we connect our buttons to our functions, which are our actions. And this can be in response to someone typing. This can be in response to someone pressing a button or moving a slider. There's different types of actions. All right, so if we wanna make these connections, we need to open up our storyboard file and we go into our assistant editor, which is the Venn diagram in the top right corner. And then we're gonna create some connections. And when we're looking at this code file, I like to put outlets and variables up top. And then I like to put my actions down at the bottom. I like to have view did load as the first method here. And this is sort of the order. Now we don't need this method. You rarely ever use it. So you can go ahead and get rid of it. It's just going to uh, take up space and you're almost never gonna use it unless you're working on a production app. You might use it, but most likely you won't. All right, so let's talk about outlets. To create an outlet, you're going to right click and drag into your code file and you're gonna create a label. So we'll just call this one our text label. Now I'm gonna use camel case, so that's a lowercase first letter, capital second letter for any subsequent word. So we're gonna connect that. This is creating an outlet connection and it's gonna be of type UI label. UI label is the code reference, the code name for this attribute. It's gonna auto insert code for us. It's creating an implicitly unwrapped optional. Don't worry too much about that. All that means is that this is a value that gets connected. Now there is downsides to this, that if you mess up this connection from your UI to code, things can break. So if you accidentally rename this after creating the connection, you can break things and you can see your your connection right here if you click on it. And that's that's another story. But like that is your outlet. So now what happens when the view did load, let's get rid of the, the comment on line 21. We can say text label dot text is equal to A. All right, so we can just say something like that happens when we start the app. So instead of saying what it originally was going to say, we now are saying that it says something else. Now, view did load is a common place to put code. This is a great place if you need to set up some attributes. So maybe you need to load data and redisplay. You would do that in, in this section for the app's first launch. So this is when the app's is first launching this screen. All right, now let's create an action for this button. So you're gonna right click on the button and drag it over. If you're on a, a trackpad, you can do a two finger click and drag it over. For the action, we're gonna just say button pressed. And we have to be very careful that we select an action, not an outlet. You only wanna create an outlet if you wanna change the title of the button, but if you wanna invoke a, a chunk of code to run, if you wanna do something, you wanna query your web server, if you want to process some information, if you want something to move around the screen, that's when we're gonna do an action. So we're gonna set this up, we're gonna connect it. That's gonna auto insert code for us. Now, when we look at these, we're gonna see IB outlet and IB action. These are special keywords so that Xcode can connect from the UI on the left to our code file on the right. And so it's important that we have these. When Xcode's working properly, you should see that these are filled in. 
And I think you have to be in this assistant editor view, which is the Venn diagram icon for multi-screen layout to see this actually working. All right, so in here we can do things. So we can print a message to the developer. This is gonna to go to the console. So if I were to run the app right now, it's not gonna be visible to the user. So that's not super useful for someone who's actually using this, but as a developer, you can see those developer messages in your console output along the bottom of Xcode. When you click this button, it does that. All right, so that is an action. But what's more useful is now we can use these actions to change things. So let's actually change that text label again. We can say text label dot text is equal to you pressed me. And we can run it and it will change our message. So let's go ahead. Now it says you pressed me. Now it's always gonna say the same thing. So why don't we do something a little bit different? Let's create a variable to store the number of times that the button has been pressed. So we'll just create a variable at the very top. And one of your other questions is, when do you sort of assign values to variables? So we could assign the value at the very top, um, but I'm not going to do that. Instead, I'm gonna do it right in here. So in here, I want count to start at zero. So when we first come to this screen, when the screen is first loaded into memory, we're gonna set count equal to zero. So we'll set up the initial state of any variables or, or things in our application in our view did load method for a view controller. So this is when we're looking at a single screen here. And then we are going to increase the count. And so we can increase the count by saying count is equal to count plus one. That will increase that value. And instead of just printing out, you pressed me, we could also print out the value of this. And we can do that by creating a string and then passing in an int value, which would be our count. And it will convert that and we'll add that to the end. And we'll add another message. All right, so you pressed me X number of times and it's gonna display that. So let's go ahead and see if this works. We'll go ahead and run it. And okay, so now it's giving us an error. And this is one of those errors. This is why we have implicitly unwrapped optionals. So you have two options here. One option is to initially set this to zero up top, which is fine. The other option, you can just make this an implicitly unwrapped optional. So I'll just have both of these as options. This is, is just because Xcode is expecting another uh, initializer method and to go down that route is going to be more complicated. So just do it in your your view did load, set that value and you will be good to go. So let's go ahead and run it. And now when we press this, it's going to give us the count. Now, it didn't really match up with my expectations. It started at 0, so starting at 0 was not the best value. So let's start at 1 and we'll rerun it. So we'll just change count equals 1 right here, and then if you were doing this just up top, it would be one here. Again, there's multiple ways of doing this, and you just need to pick one way of doing it. So we'll just click this, and we'll see that this value will increase over time. All right, so that's a little bit about outlets and actions and uh, what I'm calling implicitly unwrapped optionals, and that's when you have a type with an explanation mark at the end. All that means is that the value is not going to be set right away, but the value is going to be there when we start our application. And this is how all UI in our iPhone apps are going to sort of be initialized because it's actually going to, when we when we look at our storyboard file, the UI over here is actually going to be sort of unarchived and it's going to be then created and connected to our code. And, and Xcode and the whole iPhone app tool chain is gonna do all of that for us automatically. It's gonna create those connections and our app's just gonna work. So that's that's sort of how this gets opened up and, and connected. Generally, you're not gonna to wanna to do something like this, but if you're just testing something out, whatever works and whatever is the simplest is the best thing to do. And because implementing the init method for a view controller is a little bit complex, I would sort of stay away from that and for now, in your view controller, just get things working and assign variables in your view to load method. All right, so that's a little bit about 
outlets, actions, and variables in your application. I like to have the, the variables up top and the actions down below or any methods that I'm going to add to do some additional behaviors. All right, John, I hope this was helpful. Let me know if you have any other questions.